Thank you all so much for tuning in to Connect. I'm here with Brent C. Brown. I will let you tell them your title because it's very impressive. I'm Chairman and CEO of Chesley Brown International. All right, and tell us, what does Chesley Brown International do? Well, Chesley Brown has, first of all, been around 28 years. We are a security management company. Uh, we started as consultants. That's all we did, security consulting, for the first seven years. Wow. We had so many clients that came to us and said, if you'll cross over into the contract side of security, we'll give you the business. Um, I never had a vision or wanted to be in what I call the poly guard business. <laughs> they don't want to be a polyester guard owner. Um, but uh, there is a need for uh, boots on the ground, as we call it. Yes. So we set out on an 18-month R&D process of how to create what we had captured as consultants. In other words, really being at the at the adults' table. You know, when when we were consultants, we're at the same table with the C-suite people. Yeah with the, the, the legal counsel and the big insurance and you know, the, all those folks who were at the table. And we didn't want to be reverted to a vendor, um, a guard vendor, and lose our spot. So what we came up with was the concept of true security management. And we actually um, are proud to say we pioneered the modern day security management concept. Wow. Um, not necessarily the term, mm -hmm. but in, in perspective of actually managing security programs. So our, our programs are, many of them are private labeled, so you might not see the Chesley Brown name on them. Uh, and we kind of like that uh, because it, uh, we think that our management style fits better than, than the name necessarily. Wow. Brent, what gave you the idea to embark on this? 28 years ago, you said? 28 years. Wow. This October. Well, you know, they, I was raised around entrepreneurs, uh -huh. so I was destined to to be one. <laughs> right. Um, I've had some wonderful mentors. Uh, I had a grandfather that was in the egg business. Um, my uncle was in the poultry business, very successful. Um, his company, which is in its third generation now, has three poultry plants. And uh, when he passed away in 86, they had nine spinoff businesses from that. So I watched that, uh, watched that closely. My dad is an entrepreneur. Um, he is a um, by training and education, uh, an accountant, a tax expert. Wow. But um, he's had several companies over the years, main one being in a, a very specialized accounting firm that specialized in accounting and tax for dentist. But he also owned a dental laboratory, so I, I watched that. And, it's in your um, blood. It, it was in my blood. <laughs> it is in my blood. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I like to say that I'm, I'm a lucky entrepreneur, that it, I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. I would be in business. If it weren't security, I'd be doing something else in business, entrepreneurially. I'm one of the lucky entrepreneurs that actually has a passion for the field that I'm in. Yeah. And, and the way I got there was because I graduated from high school a little early. Back in my day, you could. I was able to start college early um, uh, through a program at Kennesaw State, which was at a remote campus at the time. And also, I had decided that being an, an entrepreneur, Owning a company was where I was going to head, but um, I knew I probably shouldn't be in the poultry business because I didn't want to compete with family. Um, went real crazy about the dental laboratory business by that stage, but uh, thought it would be uh, real estate, um, specifically property management. But you had to have a license in Georgia to be a uh, even in property management if you're managing other folks. So I did that, got my real estate license, but. I had a secret desire to be a police officer. Wow. Um, had never really viewed myself as a career police officer, but I, I didn't want to be 50 years old one day and wish I had. So I'm 54 today and I'm glad I was. <laughs> uh, and it was through that process, while I was in college, I'd finished the real estate school, I actually started with a small real estate company selling real estate, which I hated. Um, started with a police department, a major metro Atlanta police department, wow. as a dispatcher. Wow. Wasn't old enough to go on the road. Uh, did that until I was, that entrepreneurial spirit started coming out, even uh, knowing that you had to be 21 to be a police officer. But I figured out that you could take the test as long as you were 20 and just keep reinstating the score. 
So I did that hmm. month after month. I was already a dispatcher. My score was good. It was a civil service test. So when it came time for me to be 21, um, I became a police officer. Wow. A little bump in the road with some color vision issues, but um, worked around that uh, and was hired at, at age 21 as a police officer. That first year of actually working as a, as a beat cop, just an old beat cop, I came up with the concept of, of Chesley Brown. Wow. And um, thinking that I could do a parallel field of here's the property management folks that I've learned, that I've done a little bit of, and here's the law enforcement that maybe there's a field and, and created a unique company. So that's, that's fascinating. You really got to touch on multiple industries. Plus, entrepreneurship is in your blood. Um, what were the first few years like? Tough. Yeah. Um, I policed. I had a goal when I started policing to police for five years. Uh, I was a was in law enforcement for five years, almost to the day. Wow. Um, uh, it was kind of a um, it was it was kind of a god thing that that even though I had a, year, a five year goal, um, I really liked policing. Uh, and I was a geeky enough cop that I enjoyed it all. I, I enjoyed being in uniform. I enjoyed the hot calls I did, but I just enjoyed being around other cops. So um, my last year, now I had started the business plan the first year in law enforcement uh, to create the company. My last year in law enforcement was a turning experience of, of actually watching the violence increase, mm. being involved in a lot of um, intense uh, calls and yeah. situations, and it was, it was as if God was saying, listen, we had an agreement for five years, <laughs> I'm going to break you from this so that you could pursue your, your passion. Wow. Um, About what year was that? This was around uh, 89, 90. Okay. Um, and I remember there was a call that there was a major chase. These folks had bought, uh, stole two um, cars, ended up stealing a police cruiser. Oh my gosh. They, there was multiple crashes on, on the interstate. I was a second car back. Um, long story short, the car crashed, shots fired, everybody was ducking. We didn't know oh, who was going goodness. after who. That day I came home that night, and I said, "I'll see it all. <laughs> I can, I can go." Yeah. And uh, and it was it was a it was a clean break at mm -hmm. the time. As much as I loved law enforcement, mm -hmm. I didn't want to be around it. Right. Um, Understandably. And it it took me a little bit of time to to get back into where once a cop, always a cop. So you you hear a siren, you're always curious. Right. You know. So, and I had the double way in me. I'm, I'm a curious person, so that helps in business and it helps in law enforcement. Um, so, I was lucky enough that whenever I left law enforcement that uh, one of the oldest clubs in Atlanta, uh, one of the private clubs, uh, uh, country clubs that always hired former police officers to handle their security. It was a coat and tie job. Um, it paid me more than I was making as a police officer. I had better benefits, and I shared it with another ex-cop wow. who flew helicopters part-time for the police department still. So we shared the job, and we literally looked at each other's schedule and said, well, I have these meetings I need to go to. Uh, and he said, well, I'm scheduled to fly these days. So we covered the entire uh, shifts without really ever working together a whole lot. What that gave me the ability to do in creating a company is to focus on the quality that we were creating, to focus on the type of company I really wanted to create, and not worry about the money. Um, I was young and single. I was 26 year old, years old when I started the company. Oh my gosh. Um, and I was able to take what I was making at the club. Um, that was my income. Everything else was gravy. Uh, and our first group of consultants were all ad hoc. Most of them were ex-cops or they were actively employed cops. And they never asked me when they were getting paid. They knew whenever I got paid, they would get paid. 
So I did that for about three years before I actually severed that income. And that was a huge yeah. blessing. Um, yeah. I can't imagine doing it any other way. Leap of faith. Yeah, it absolutely <laughs> was. <laughs> a few different times. Absolutely. Um, what kind of footprint do you have now, if you can disclose? Well, we actually, um, as one of my close friends who retired from uh, Price Waterhouse says, uh, you actually throw a big footprint. Um, the truth is we were in more than 30 states and three countries from a client base. We operate on the ground programs in about 10 states. Wow. Um, we're a, a company that's large enough that we can do what we choose to do in the industry, but still small enough that we care and that matters. Um, in our industry, on, at least on the uniform part of it, um, most of our competitors are huge publicly traded companies, hmm. most of them foreign owned. Um, we're a, um, a comparatively small, very privately held company. And so when I talk to clients, they're talking to the decision maker. And we, we run very effectively and efficiently. And I have an incredible staff that, uh, that has been with me through this process. Well, thank you for all that you bring to your employees and this industry for all that you're doing to literally keep people safer, you know? And it's fascinating and very unique that you have that firsthand experience. Um, you're not a, a foreign-based uh, entity running this conglomerate. You, you've been there. You've had your feet in those boots. Right. So you know. Um, and that's, that's just amazing and thankful you're able to sit here in this chair today, <laughs> you know, all in one piece. Um, I was just a witness to a car chase a few weeks ago, we were on I-20 going from Atlanta to Augusta. All of a sudden, vroom, and then eight, eight cars chasing the car, and crazy. it's no joke. Um, how can anybody out there watching right now, you know, this is going to be on YouTube and all over social media, so um, it has the potential to reach a lot of people in a lot of different places. How can we pour into you? How can we help you? Um, whether it's personally or professionally, you know, what's next for you? What's on the horizon? Well, we, we, have, we have actually looked at over the last decade where security is heading. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I pride our, ourselves, myself and the company and our leadership of always looking at the innovative approach. Um, security is much more than placing a guard at the gate. Uh, it's, it's much more of, of an intense focus nowadays and honest to goodness, as hokey as it sounds, I believe that's a noble calling. Of course. So we take a lot of pride in, in, in doing security and doing it right. Yeah. There's a lot of people that do it wrong. The challenge that the industry has today is manpower. Um, they don't all want to acknowledge it. but. I read, I read a, um, an article yesterday about the, the CEO of Deloitte and part of the, the comment that she made in, in the article was that 60% of her workforce are millennials that Deloitte has trained that will leave them in two years. Ooh. Now this is a highly trained workforce, a highly motivated workforce, highly educated workforce and 60% are going to turn over in two years time. Now dial that down to a entry level security officer who has a huge responsibility controlling safety and security for multi-million dollar assets um, and even more critical the, the personal assets of the people. Yeah, lives. And think about what kind of turnover you're going to have, what type of um, challenges you're going to have when uh, it, it's a misnomer when people say that, that security guards, and we don't use that term in our business, ours are officers, but, but just so you know the lay of the land, mm -hmm. that they're minimum waged employees. They're not, but they're pretty darn close. Um, for the first 10 years or so, Chesley Brown was always able to say easily we paid higher than industry standards 
We had much better benefits. In fact, we had better benefits than a lot of our clients did. Wow. We were actually asked by some clients to tone it back <laughs> because they didn't have as good of benefits. Oh, gosh. Um, but all that's changed. The dynamics have changed. Um, you know, in Pittsburgh, for example, we have a unionized workforce, um, which ironically the unions targeted us because they wanted everybody else to come to our standards. Uh, so we we play nicely with them because they didn't force us to do anything we weren't already doing. Uh, and there is some disciplinary issues that, that actually they help us with. Wow. Um, but you look at the, the, the unemployment rates nowadays, you look at the, the millennial workforce in general, um, frankly everything that we require is everything they don't like, which is um, show up on time, be there a specific time, wear a uniform, groom yourself, and make notes, and it's not always on the computer. That's foreign to, to most millennials. They want to, you know, they want to come to work more relaxed, and they don't want to be told specific times, and then they certainly don't want to be told to stand somewhere. So we're already dealing with an issue of how do we get the right people. Mm -hmm. Then you're, you're dealing with all the, the facts of um, people that we hire have to have clean records, they have to have clean drug screens, um, all those things that you take in consideration with a very low unemployment rate. So we don't want the folks that are unemployed because at this stage they're unemployable. Hmm. We want good quality people that may be on a trajectory to, to move up and out from the first time we did our first project 28 years ago, I said, I'd rather have someone that is incredibly sharp for six months and help them move on in their career than someone that is mediocre for six years. Hands down. It makes sense. Yeah. But the industry has not followed that same philosophy. So where do you go with that industry now? Well, the, the winners, in my opinion, are going to be the ones that have understood uh, what we researched and developed over a decade ago, which is blending boots and technology. And what do you mean by that? There's a whole lot of impressive technology out there. Most every major corporation, certainly all your Class A office towers, your corporate campuses, have all types of electronic security embedded around them the property. Yeah. Most of them don't take advantage of that. Oh, that's so unfortunate. We just got a ring doorbell and I'm geeking out <laughs> over it. But they're great. They're great. They're awesome. <laughs> I geek out with you because I love all that stuff. It's so cool. <laughs> but but and the the technology is advanced. It advances every day. But when we started this R&D process um, actually 12 years ago now, what we realized was that the UK um, was far ahead of us uh, than in high-tech security. Mm. They're way behind the US on actually security officers. Uh, the quality of their, their people is, is not that, that good. But you go to London, you go to Manchester, really from stem to stern, the, the, everything is covered with cameras. Yeah. So they're the second nature to them. So the final part of our research project was to go over there and observe. And we brought that technology back to the US, the first company like ours to actually implement it. We, can, we uh, have a series of command centers. The one of them is in our corporate headquarters in Atlanta. Wow. That we can take any electronic security device and put our platform in place and control it from our remote command. Mind blown. So if you think about manpower, if you use the right technology, you can reduce the manpower. So if a client says, I have a million dollar budget, but I want 40 security officers, but they're constantly turning over and are constant problems, the Chesley Brown method would be, you don't necessarily need 40. You need 30 really good ones that are better paid and better taken care of. And let's let the technology do the work. The great part of that is 
it's not replacing boots on the ground and reducing costs because we've been told redu reduce costs. That's a great byproduct of mm -hmm. it. It's because it makes more sense. It's efficient and it's scalable. Absolutely. Yeah. It, and it never eats, never takes a break, never calls off. And when I ask, we call it our in command division, when I ask our in command what you saw, it's a video clip. Mm -hmm. it's, you're taking the human element. Now, same as with the military, there's always going to be a need for the boots on the ground. There will always be a need for that. Um, we just want our boots to be the shiny ones. Um, and the way to do that is, is blending the boots and technology. So that's not, yeah, I used to say that's the future, but that future is here. Oh, absolutely. Um, but the industry, not just our part of the industry, but the people we serve is a little slower to, to buy in totally to, well, why would I want to reduce from 40 to 30 or even from five to two because of the concept of, well, I'm, I'm used to seeing a body. Yeah. But if you have more comprehensive security by blending that, you still have to back it up. You still have to be able to respond. Yeah. Um, but that's going to be the, the winner in the industry. You're not uh, sacrificing quality uh, due to quantity reasons. You're, you're just operating smarter. Right. So when people want to learn more about Chesley Brown and you, obviously you offer a wealth of knowledge um, and you're not going to give away, you know, proprietary secrets, but if they do want to learn more and just engage with you, where should they go? Well, we have a, a very good, robust uh, website, okay. chesleybrown.com. Chesleybrown.com. We'll put that link in the description below. And we also have a, uh, a YouTube channel. Oh, cool. Chesley Brown International uh, oh. on, the, on the YouTube. That probably doesn't sound right on the YouTube. No, it's fine. YouTube. It's... <laughs> It is. It's on. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so we, we do a, a series called the uh, uh, Chesley Brown E-Brief, uh, which we try to do at least once every other week or as news breaks. So you'll find all those in our, our uh, Chesley Brown channel on YouTube. Um, so we, we've been a, um, I was going to say connoisseur, but that's not appropriate because I'm not really a connoisseur of technology, but admirer of technology. Um, and we like to deploy that, not just in our boots and technology, but in ourselves. Yeah, in your communications and, and all that you absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So wow. the, you can find us there. Um, fortunately, uh, for the last 23 years, we've been fairly high profile in, in news related stuff. We've, we've been on everything from all the, the local affiliates in Atlanta to Japanese television, Good Morning Great Britain, The Today Show, um, Hannah Dean Combs back in the, the original yeah. uh, Fox days. So we're, we've been out there. Um, You've made an impact. So we, ha we have. And I think, you know, that's really the main motivator is uh, if, if I wanted to simply build a company, and people do this, they build companies to sell, and I don't begrudge them of that, but they're a different type of entrepreneur. Um, usually the passion isn't there for the industry that they're serving. Um, you know, if I wanted to simply go out there and, and make money and flip a company, I probably could have cashed out at 15 years. Right. Um, because I get the calls all the time. That's not what motivates me. Um, as I said before, it is a noble calling. Um, there's frustrating days because of all the challenges. Um, but as I was just talking to my friend Don Martin and saying, Don, if it was easy, everybody would do it. That's right. Um, but uh, the, I guess the real motivator is, you know, we were sitting around the, our conference room, my conference room uh, a few years ago, and talking about strategies and what's our mission statement and what's our, uh, you know, goals. and, mm -hmm. and and I said, everybody's writing everything on whiteboards. And I said, wait a minute. This is the truth. I just want to go home every day, proud of who we are, what we do, and how we do it. And if we accomplish that, I'm happy. So that's really what we strive for. Mm -hmm. We have all the other fancy stuff that you that you can find on our website. That, um, that you know, the thought leader type stuff. Yep. But that truly is my main motivator. 
my, my team's motivation. And every day, even on our worst day, whether it's something that has surrounded us or let's say it's something that's involved a pro project that we've um, helped secure better, or helped through a crisis situation, that's the final thing I ask the team when they go home. Are you proud of what you did today? Are you proud of who you are and how you did it? And if that's the case, then I'm fine. From, from our perspective, what I want to make sure everybody understands is if someone says they're a cybersecurity expert, run. Ooh. Because they're not. <laughs> unless they can clarify to you their specific sector of expertise. Right. Um, there's so many areas that, that deal with cyber. Mm -hmm. I'll give you uh, two issues that, that have uh, come up over the last few years. One was there was um, a meeting that we have at the State Department every year with um, private industry that has partnered for nearly 30 years with the State Department. We get some incredible briefings Probably about three years ago, we had briefings from the FBI director, CIA director, a um, uh, few other key components of the State Department. The, the head of the FBI at the time said, you know, 20 years ago, the agents were taught different things and they might not even have a computer on their desk. Wow. He said, today, everything we touch is involved cyber. I can tell you as a, as a former police officer, just an old beat cop, that in my day of being a beat cop, if you had a bank robbery, we got the fun part. We got to run lights and siren uh, to get to the bank and close everything down, but we didn't do anything. We waited on the FBI to show up because it was an FBI crime. Hmm. That's not the case anymore because they don't have time for that because they're dealing with all the, the, the other th the cyber and intelligence stuff. The other thing is, in the same program the next year we had a um, president of a world bank not the world bank but a large world bank and he said when he started in the banking industry he was a teller our biggest security issue according to him was bank robberies he said today as CEO of this company I don't even worry about bank robberies I worry about what cyber does to us. And he said, that's where our focus is. And he was actually the first one to say, if someone says they're an expert, run. Wow. So there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of components to cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. um, at Chesley Brown, we, we started as consultants. We manage security. We also have a corporate investigations division where we really do what I call consultative investigations. And yes, do we, we do some cyber, um, but a lot of it is making sure that you're coordinating with the proper experts. Right. That, that's our expertise, is having the ability to put the right people. But trust me, there are a lot of people that claim a lot of things that they don't know what they're doing. And they can actually make things worse because um, even in your basic crime nowadays, there is a cyber component. So you got your Cybersecurity folks that are software driven that protect the computers, great. They're not investigators. You got the forensic, forensic folks yeah. that can put it back together, mm -hmm. um, but they can't tell you how to prevent it. Mm -hmm. So, cyber is a huge component. When I have young kids that ask for my advice, they want to be in security or law enforcement, I tell them being a beat cop is a heck of a lot of fun. Do it while you're young, if that's what you want to do. But plan for the future. Right. And if you get an expertise in cybersecurity, whatever that sector is, you can write your own ticket. That is so true. While you were talking, of course, I think of two of my favorite movies, Catch Me If You Can. Love it. Right? And then the whole Born Identity series, right? Right. right. And that's kind of like your everyday life. So I'm a little jealous <laughs> and just thankful for, for what you're doing. Well, thank you very much. And I, I'll tell you, if you want to add a, a link to this, there's uh, Frank Abagnale. <gasps> yes. Uh, I actually got to meet him. Oh, my gosh. Um, but I recently found on YouTube an interview he did um, 
that is probably, it's actually it was better than the one when I saw him and met him in person, which was security specific. Um, but this one, not only does he do a 15, 20 minute of his story, which he doesn't really like to tell that much anymore, but it also lets you see the big picture of, he's been working for the FBI for 40 years. Obviously he doesn't have to anymore. Um, he has a passion for it. Mm -hmm. But at the very end of the clip, so stick with it. Okay. Um, the very end of the clip, he talks about what cyber security and the threats are going to be in the future. Wow. And, and he will tell you that passwords are soon to be a thing of the past yeah. and he'll tell explain why but I would encourage you if you if you like the movie catch me if you can if if you like just all the secret super secret type of stuff and the the things that, that happen in cyber first of all it blows your mind anyway the things that's going on out there um, but you'll love that clip awesome. and so I thank you for that nugget that. That Absolutely. is great. That's gold. That is a gold nugget. <laughs> <laughs> and cut.